Alright, we're going to make an involuted gear, involute gear, for an Atlas 618 uh, change gears. Uh, I know from research on the web that it's a 24 pitch and it has a pressure angle of 14.5 degrees. It's very important that you, under, you know the dimetrial pitch and the pressure angle of the gear you wish to reproduce. So if you don't have one that you can't find it on the web, take your calipers, get an outside diameter. The outside diameter of this one is 1.97. Over top of it, put your number of teeth. This one has 44 teeth. Add two to it and then divide it and you'll get 23.350. So your pitch of this gear, or your Demetrial pitch, is 24. You round it up. Now when you do that with your gear, if you don't get anything even close to a whole number, it's going to be a whole no an even number, then you probably have a metric gear. And in my description for this video, I gave a link to a guy's website. He does a really good job of describing how to figure out for modular type gears. Uh, the metric system so you could go take a look at that and now the pitch angle the pressure angle sorry the pressure angle is either usually probably either 14.5 or 20 uh, when they're looking for strength or durability they'll go up to a pressure angle of about 20 14.5 gives you a little plus or minus on your depth, and um, it, it's a good one. It, and if you don't have any idea what your pressure angle is, make your uh, make your cutter a 14.5. Do your plunge cuts, and then take your cutter that you, and then meet it with your gear. Okay, and you should be able to tell if it's going to mate correctly. If it doesn't, then you can take a 20 degree bit and redo your plunges to the 20 degree and that's probably what you're going to find you need a uh, lot of discussion about these hobs and what they can do and what they can't do anybody that I know that's actually made one and actually used the gears they've found out they work quite well if you see my thread cutting attachment that I made uh, the video on that one those were all hobbed with a gear like a hob like this except a little smaller so what we're going to do today is we'll make a hob, then I'll make a gear, and I'll make the gear with this store-bought Atlas gate. This is, the, this is the gear that came with my Atlas. And we'll put them under the microscope. We'll run them side by side, take a look at them. Then I'll take it out from under the microscope, and I'll put the gear that we made on my lathe, and I'll run my lathe, and you can get an idea of how they run and what they sound like when you're done. That should give you a pretty good enough information to make a decision whether you want to make a hob or you want to go with a, uh, a single point cutter. I look at it like gasoline. Uh, it, most cars can run on regular gas. Maybe 10% of the cars actually need premium. So if you need premium you might want to go out and buy a set of cutters and do it a different way. But if you're making gears, I've, I've made a lot of stuff with these hobs. Uh, they work pretty good. I like them. But, Two things to make the hob we need to know. We need to know the circular pitch or the distance between our uh, plunge cuts that we're going to make to make this hob. Now to figure that out, your circular pitch equals 3.146 over your Demetrial pitch, which in our case is 24. So that equals 0.131 zero eight three three if you're using a calculator so we're going to go use this here so that's going to be our distance between cuts now we need to know when we make our plunge cut how deep are we going to go with it our, and you figure out how deep it is by putting 3.40 over your Demetrial pitch again and that equals 0.14 and 1666 six, 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 if you're using a calculator uh, we're going to go to 0.14 so that's what we need to get started so let's go into the shop and start making this hob all right we're going to start off by cutting off uh, 
half inch uh, water hardening drill rod uh, at two and a half inches and we'll, that's how we'll make our plug. Alright, let's start off by facing this drill rod. Stand for the edge a little bit. Bring in a center belt a bit. Take it over to the mill. Alright, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut a little quarter inch wide release in the end of the hub so that when you put it in your holder, it's going to, uh, you can put it, a set screw on it and the set screw will hold it and if you get any uh, ding in the metal, it, you're uh, Your hob will still come out of the thing. It won't get caught up on the ding. And there, that's plenty. That should do it right there. All right, so now we got to get our cutting bit. We need 14.5 degrees. So I built this little wooden jig. And you just simply put your piece in here like that. Keep going side to side. This one's about ready now. Your table set at seven degrees so that you got a nice rake on the side of it. You want a 29 degree included angle. So there's your 29 degree concluded angle. Now when you're done, take an India stone or a diamond stone or something and then you can just run the top of it across that like you would your graver or anything like that that you're sharpening. And then I just run the sides just a little bit. And then give it a test out. You cut an edge on your. There you go. All right, you got a good cut edge there. Okay. Just wanted to give you a good look at that tool post holder. Holds the tool upside down on the rear side. Uh, the first uh, hob I made had a 20 degree. Uh, uh, bit and I didn't have any trouble uh, with the plunge cuts with that but with the 14.5 bit I had all kinds of troubles and I uh, I messed around with my bearings in the head and the tail stocks uh, I tightened the gibbs up I I, I used a tail stock with uh, just messed around with that tool stuff I squared the tool with the head I, I messed around with feeds and speeds forever uh, I, I tried cutting it like you would uh, uh, your threads and yeah, that didn't really work either then all of a sudden it dawned on me that people use uh, the cutoff saws and that's a plunge cut by reversing it on the back side so I made it and uh, sure enough it as you can you'll see in the film it just plunges in there quite nicely and I liked it so much I even made a bigger one and that one's for my atlas and uh, and I got cutoff blade on one side and I got the uh, a regular uh, quarter inch tool bit on the other side and I like them a lot and um, in the video you'll see them so uh, uh, you can keep that in the back of your head in case you want to make one okay I've uh, skim cut and I've put dicom on here and I'm starting my uh, plunge cut there's the first one there
Okay, I'm going to start the first plunge cut. There's the first plunge cut. I'm not going to show you all of them. I'll just make them and uh, show you parts and pieces. There it is. There's your five plunge cuts. That's the hardest part of this whole job. And they're done now. They look pretty good now, but we'll measure them. I'm going to take a little, uh, back this off a little bit. I'm going to take a triangular file and just kind of knock the edges off. Right now I'm cutting the relief on the back side of the uh, hob. And this will take a while. bore you with the whole thing. As I get near the end, I'll come back on again. Okay, we finished the back relief. Take a chamfer the edges. Okay, before we go over to the mill, I wanted to show you this graphic re representation of what we're going to do when we get over there. We're going to put a slitting saw in there, and we're going to cut five slots. Notice that the slot, the cut, is just above the center, the center line of the hub. Then we'll rotate it 90 degrees and then we'll use an end mill to cut it off like that. These are our cutting edges here and we're just going to cut some relief behind them. This is just a graphic re representation. Uh, you, this is, you can kind of do this mostly uh, by eye. Uh, the only thing that's really critical is this slitting saw has to be right on center or slightly above the center and then you'll get the proper rake on your uh, on your cutting edge. Okay, let's go over to the mill and do this. Okay, this next move is is really critical. You get your hob in here with your slitting saw. Bring your city slitting saw so it just touches off the top of the hob. Then move your Y axis away from it. You're going to Okay, and now you're set and ready to make your slits. Alright, we're cutting the slits in the slot in the hob right now. Cutting five of them. This will take a while, so I'll stop every once in a while and just give you a look and see how it's, so you can see how it's going.
Alright, that's the end of the slit and saw cutting. So now we'll get rid of that and get an end mill in there and finish this thing up. Alright, now we're using the end mill to cut the relief on the, the cutter edge. This will take a while. I'll come back and forth to show you what's going on. Okay, we're making our last few passes here. Take it off. And... Okay, we're starting the hardening process on the on the uh, hob using map gas could do this with propane. I've done it with propane before. I just happen to have MAP. So we're going to heat it to cherry. And then we got a can of water sitting right there. Punching it in the water. Okay, that's that. Okay, here's a finished look at the hob. Get an idea how it went. And uh, we're ready now to go over to the mill and uh, start making our gear.